My name is uh, Kevin McDonough, Project Superintendent with Kinsigley Construction out of the Portland, Maine office. And currently we are on the Bowdoin College Center for Arctic Studies and Mills Hall project on Bowdoin's campus in Brunswick, Maine. Two independent all mass timber structures from the ground up, um, CLT floor plates and CLT shear walls, as well as glue lamb columns and beams for the structure. So I think some of the biggest lessons learned that we didn't necessarily know what to expect going in. Um, the biggest one was probably moisture protection. So we had an insurance, um, you know, the general liability insurance and the builder's risk insurance more importantly. Uh, there was a lot of protection that we needed to do. So staging everything out of the mud, covering it, wrapping it, and making sure that no moisture was getting to it. So we were pretty particular about that in the beginning, but through the course of construction, we realized that kind of letting the wood breathe was actually an easier way to protect it from any staining related to moisture. So um, covering it from UV, because UV will definitely sunburn the finish, but making sure that moisture has a way to get out of the wood is probably the best thing. That was a huge lesson learned. So we started with splines. Um, and just taping them with South County Post and Beam, who was our rector. So you would put down the floor plates of CLT, you would put in the splines, and then you would just tape any edge or joint between panels and splines that we had. What we realized was is that the splines would swell, um, things like that, when the wood got wet. So moisture was actually getting into that pocket and bleeding down to the floor below, leading to a little bit of staining. So ultimately, um, we decided to post install Sega wet guard directly to the timber deck. So that was a decision that was made after the installation. We put that down with our own self-perform group um, and it certainly significantly reduced the amount of moisture that was getting into the splines and the joints between panels and then bleeding through and showing on the floors below. It also helped to act as a bond breaker between the raw CLT and the three inch concrete topping slabs that we had to make sure that the concrete materials weren't leaching into the wood either. We also knew that modeling was big for uh, CLT and glue lamb because we have to have the penetrations for the MEPs in just the right spot that are approved by the structural engineer. So we did a really good job of engaging the MEP trades early, doing an early buyout package and basically buying with them modeling services. To Another thing that wasn't necessarily a lesson, but a choice that we made that worked out really well was having all of the hardware pre-installed so that we weren't dealing with buckets and buckets of hardware and trying to cut out with roto zips and chainsaws the seats for these pieces of hardware to sit in. So it was nice to be able to just basically install it as it showed up on site and not have to prep anything. Uh, one of the kind of buzzwords that I've heard is like a kit of parts. And it's, you know, not so much construction, but just an installation. Um, kind of like a Lego set rather than trying to build, weld, and inspect steel, things like that. It's the last thing is just make sure that you, you know, any fire stopping that has to do with edge of slab, exteriors, if you do have a balloon framing system, you just need to really vet what's in those spaces and what it's going to take to achieve your fire rating. This is a newer type of construction where you may be trying to hide MEPs in places where you otherwise wouldn't. So just kind of vetting those edge of slab details and making sure that you have a fire stopping inspector, auditor, or whatever. Um, review those details and say that you can achieve a one or two hour rating as necessary.